Hi everyone, it's Alicia from class. Today I'm going to share with you my technology application. I actually can't take full credit for this application all by myself because Al actually introduced me to this a few weeks ago when we met in class. Once he showed it to me, I had all these ideas and I wanted to share it with everybody because I thought of all these different applications and ways that you could use this, uh, not just in a science classroom, but really in a lot of different classrooms. So I think the easiest way to get to this website is to go into Google and just type in the National Geographic Mapmaker Interactive. Once you do that search, it's going to be the first link that pops up. So we're going to click on this right here. And now this site is actually through the National Geographic Education website. And it takes a few minutes to load. I've used this website at my school and I haven't had any problems with it so far. Um, so basically it's an interactive map maker and you can utilize this in all different types of classrooms, whether you're in a social studies classroom, a science classroom, um, you know, even foreign language, I think this could be applied. So I'm just going to play around and show you guys a few different ways you can utilize this. So the first thing is you want to select over here what type of map you want to share with your students. You can choose from a world map or make it just a United States map or other areas. I usually with my students use a world map so I'm going to select it on the world map region and then in map mode we can change it to several different types so you can change it to the type of map that you're looking to share with your students. I typically like to use a satellite map because it's similar to Google Earth and it's different and it's satellite so I kind of like it. It gives it more of an earthy feel rather than a computerized feel. I'll click through the other options just so you guys can see. When you click on topographic, it's not truly a topographic map but when we go into the other areas it, it, it becomes essentially a topographic map. Um, if we click on streets, it labels things a little bit more and if you zoom in on those areas it's labeled a bit more. If we click on the National Geographic, slightly different and then the outline is more of a computerized um, outline. So I'm going to stick with satellite here and now if we go on the left hand side we have lots of different options that we can click on to make our map specific to what we can utilize it for. So if we click on physical systems you can see that we can click ocean surface currents here so this is going to give you now if you were teaching weather in an earth science class you can utilize a map like this and show students where the warm fronts are and where the cold fronts are in terms of weather and all of that stuff. So that's kind of cool. The one thing you want to be sure of is that you unclick that area because otherwise it's going to kind of keep adding each map onto the next and it becomes a little difficult to distinguish. This option here I actually have used with my students and like a virtual lab that I did with them. So basically this key indicates to students where there's higher levels of chlorophyll and we talked about you know, the higher the chlorophyll concentration, the healthier, you know, an aquatic ecosystem is. So I had them look at this map and compare it to other areas of the world. Now we can also look at sea surface temperature between summer and winter. Those are some other options. If I click down here to physical systems and land, this is great for earth science teachers. Um, I do teach eighth grade earth science, so I find this typically useful. And what I like about this is I can show my students where earthquakes are occurring, and then I can click on volcanic eruptions. And I could show them that where volcanic eruptions are occurring is also the same area where earthquakes are, is happening as well. I can also click on the plate tectonics and that's really neat because now it shows all three maps on one that basically the boundaries of the tectonic plates is where all of the volcanoes and the earthquakes are all happening. So that's kind of an important concept in our curriculum so I thought that that was kind of cool. And again I'm going to deselect these items so that way we can continue. You can do surface elevation and again this would be more of like a relief map, a topographic map that indicates you know elevation which is kind of neat. If we click down to physical systems and we move on to climate um, you can use this when you're teaching global warming if you're in a science classroom or even geography in the social studies classroom in terms of biomes and whatnot I've had my students you know use these maps to figure out what biomes are in different continents you can even have a precipitation rainfall map, you know, and again correlating to the biomes of the world, which is kind of neat. If we scroll down here, you can do air temperatures. Again, you could do global warming, geography, biomes, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty neat. Um, if we scroll down to human systems, this I actually used with my biology class with the population density. So this shows the areas of the world that have 
you know, greater amount of people than other areas. So I had my students analyze this and, you know, pick out which countries had the most amount of people in it and how does this, you know, relate to human impacts on the world. So this is definitely a large unit in the biology curriculum. One interesting thing I thought was really neat is major religions. I thought a social studies class could possibly use this like in a global history class. Um, and they have it color coded based on the different religions of the world. So I thought that was really neat. I also even thought that they can utilize it in a social studies class or a foreign language class if you go to language diversity, um, which is pretty neat as well. Um, if we scroll down to human systems, you can do time zones. This is actually a topic that Audra and I were just teaching in our classes. So I shared this with my students and showed them this. And again, along with time zones, Audra and I do teach um, latitude and longitude. And if we click down here, right over here where it says select units of measure, um, you can choose and get your latitude and longitude here um, based on decimal degrees or minutes and seconds. And it's kind of neat to show the students that application. The last one I'm going to click on is environmental and society. And the options under here, if we scroll down, is again relating to human impacts and the environment. Um, this map shows, you know, which lights can be seen essentially from space, which is kind of neat to see the more populated areas. Um, this one's really neat. I did utilize this with my biology class in terms of which areas of the world have been most influenced and impacted by humans. Uh, and, you know, I kind of have students make predictions as to why or why is, you know, northern portion of Africa, you know, really the least impacted and, the, you know, the southern portion over here is definitely more impacted. You know, I have them just make predictions. Um, and the last one is a land cover map, which is pretty neat. This relates to just the amount of land that's left and what's there as far as the type of biome, whether it's a deciduous forest or a grassland and whatnot. Um, another feature of this map that's really neat is you can zoom in on particular areas. Um, you can click and drag as to where you'd like. And if you take note, again, if you're doing latitude and longitude with your students, if you look down to this lower portion right over here, it lists latitude and longitude for students. Other tools with these maps that you can utilize are markers. So if we wanted, we can come over here by themes and there's drawing tools so you can have students do freeform lines or labels if you wanted them to label, you know, um, all the states in a particular country. You could do that if you're doing a geography lesson, which is kind of neat. Um, another tool are these useful markers. I thought even if you gave students coordinates of latitude and longitude, you can have them mark it with an X, let's say. Um, there's areas, let's say, with you know, volcanoes and mountains, if I wanted students to plot where these are, like the ring of fire and things like, I, like that, I could have them indicate those items, you know, mountain symbols, and there's all kinds of stuff if we scroll down here that would be useful, you know, trees and forests and things like that, they can place on the maps, animals, so that's kind of useful for students, but anyways, I'm going to show you guys an actual virtual lab that I did with my students this past week. Um, I called it the Human Footprint Lab. This was with my biology class. Um, I basically had them look at several different maps on that website. Um, the first one I had them do was in the satellite mode. I had them look at the chlorophyll and I just asked them questions about where there were areas of high chlorophyll and where there were areas of low chlorophyll. Um, I had them look at summer maps versus winter maps. I had them look at sea surface temperatures and, you know, what kind of biome would you expect to find in polar regions. So we talked about biomes in this section and climate. We also looked at the map on precipitation and determined what biomes were in different areas of the world based on the precipitation. We also did look at maps of populations and culture. Um, I had them, you know, look at the population density, which continent has the highest population, and so on and so forth. Um, you can really, you know, tailor these questions to any of those maps um, depending on what you, your goal is, really. Um, I also had them look at the environment and society maps and the human footprint, like I mentioned. Um, the students really did like this. I had them look at coastlines and compare, you know, does the coastline have more of a human footprint compared to inland areas? 
um, and land cover. And that was really it. You know, you could do a lot with this website. I was definitely impressed with it. You can download these maps. Um, you can share them. I'll show you where you could share them. You can click on the link and that gives you the link that you can just copy and paste it directly into, you know, a Word document that you've created for students with questions. You can share it using Twitter or Delicious that we've discussed in our class or Digo, Facebook, and so on and so forth. You can print it. You can email it, which is pretty, uh, I think, convenient. Um, and I think that's really all that I have to show you guys. Let's get out of this screen here. And let me hit cancel. Um, you could also go in, there we go, full screen mode if you'd like. Um, this is probably more useful if you were going to utilize this on the smart board. Uh, to have a larger image. The one thing to keep track of though is for some reason it seems to repeat the world map a few times if you're too zoomed out. So if you zoom in, it kind of eliminates that. So you can kind of mess around with the sizing. Um, and you can also save your maps and then reopen them. So you can already create a map and then reopen a map. So you could choose the file and you know open that map from wherever you saved it. So it's definitely very convenient. Anyways, um, thank you for listening. I hope this is useful. Hopefully you guys can use this in your classroom, maybe whatever you happen to teach. Um, and hopefully you learn something new. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye.